Work smart, not hard. Here's how I fixed my custom brushless RC Trans Am with parts that cost pennies. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm back today with a little update on this Trans Am. I've made quite a breakthrough in terms of increasing the drivability and reliability of this car, though not without a little bit of a compromise. The idea here could be genius or a bit nuts, but that's just part of the fun. While I've showcased some pretty cool model car to RC conversions on this channel, what really sets this one apart is rather than using a much more sensible micro brushed motor like this one here, I've instead installed a relatively massive brushless motor. That in and of itself is not that wild, but I've maintained a more lifelike longitudinal motor arrangement with power sent through a center drive shaft into a solid axle rear end. 3D printed leaf springs are what keeps the axle in place and the rear of the car supported. What I've got here is a car that really doesn't make much sense, but it's turned out to be a pretty cool little project. I've showcased the entire build process in detail on this channel. I'll be sure to include a link to the video playlist for this project if you'd like to see this car being built and learn more about the components used. You'll also get to see some of the issues that I encountered while building this car and how I was able to eventually get something that was at least able to drive somewhat decently as it stands now, I still wouldn't call the car perfect, but a strange and sort of random idea I had ended up being quite a useful addition to this car and could be useful to implement on some future projects. I had put this car away for a while after filming the last video that I made featuring it. I robbed the wheels off this car to use for that 3D printed Corvette that I recently finished. These staggered slotted mags were the closest wheels that I had on hand, which I thought I could use for some testing. But now that I see them on the car, I actually think they look really good on this Trans Am. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should I keep the slotted mags or should I swap them out for something else? I'll put the link to the STL files for these wheels below in the description if you're interested in downloading a set for yourself, hopefully to use on your somewhat more sensible project. As you may recall from the last video that I made featuring this car, while it did work, I had some issues with a lack of torque. There's essentially no gear reduction with this current setup, and while installing the larger brushless motor was an improvement over the prior one, I'd still have some issues with it cogging and really struggling to get up to speed. This drivetrain layout is obviously different from what you'll find on a lot of other smaller scale RC cars, so finding a transmission or other means of gear reduction that would fit both the motor and the car with this current layout was a challenge, and I really couldn't find anything that I thought would work. As a result, the car sat for a while until I randomly had an idea that I thought might work. It was extremely simple and dirt cheap, not even requiring any gears. So I sort of assumed it probably wouldn't even work, but why not try it? I thought rather than having a solid connection between the motor and rear drive axle, why not have the power be sent via magnets? The idea was maybe that the magnets would slip enough so that the motor doesn't get bogged down, but still be able to propel the car forward. I achieved this by creating a new drive shaft. These two halves of the drive shaft are only held together using magnets, allowing slipping to occur. Well, to cut to the chase, it actually works, and it actually works quite well. You get so used to these crazy ideas never working, or at least not working at the beginning, but it actually works surprisingly well and basically right from the start. These here are some small 4mm outer diameter rare earth magnets with a 1mm hole in the center. I had these on hand, though obviously one variable that you can play around with is using larger size magnets for a stronger hold. The setup that I found has worked best on the Trans Am so far is to have one magnet glued to each side of the drive shaft and then just have one magnet loose in the middle. With all that friction, the magnets do get pretty hot, and I ran into some trouble when it melted the PLA that I used to 3D print each side of the drive shaft. Printing some new parts using PETG, which is a little better at tolerating higher temperatures, seems to have either solved the issue, or at least it's not softening nearly as bad. As you can see, the car can cruise around smoothly at slower speeds, which I really couldn't do well before without the motor cogging or getting very hot. Now there are some shortcomings, like as you could probably guess, hard acceleration is basically impossible. You can floor it like you would any other RC vehicle and the car will move, but I can actually accelerate faster if I sort of ease into the throttle to lessen the amount the magnets slip. There's also now basically no or at least a lot less braking, because even if I lock up the motor, it just coasts, but who needs brakes? 
It also takes longer for the car to reach top speed, or at least a higher speed. I have to really feather the throttle around the short track because it's way too tight for how fast this motor is capable of propelling this car. Remember, once those magnets lock in, there's very little gear reduction on this 2500 kV motor. One potentially positive side effect I could see with this setup is that if the car comes to a really abrupt stop or gets stuck, it might save the tiny gears in the rear axle from damage. Overall, this was definitely one of those wow, it actually works type of situations, so I thought I would share this idea with all of you. It's definitely something I'm going to continue to experiment with, and I do have some ideas to improve upon this setup, so we'll see how that goes. But let this video be a little motivation to try out those ideas, even if they seem a bit crazy, you might be able to make them work. I spent more time researching parts and trying to figure out some kind of gear reduction system than I did just creating these simple parts and using magnets that I already had on hand to create this little prototype that you see here. And of course, all it cost me was a small amount of change for those magnets since you can get a bunch of them for a few bucks and just a little filament and some dowel pins. Some other uses of these tiny magnets, as I'm sure you've seen before on this channel, is for body mounts. They're a great way to hold the body on while still allowing it to be easily removable. Another use of these magnets that I don't think I've ever showcased on the channel before, but I have done for some prior projects, is to use them for the suspension. If you flip those magnets around like this, you can kind of fine tune the amount of spring that you're getting, and for a very lightweight model car to RC conversion, they can work quite well. Not as easy to implement though as a simple spring. But there you go, a magnetic friction drive shaft or whatever we end up calling this thing. Hope you all enjoyed this little nerdy experimental update on this Trans Am. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.